we have to assess every single standard that's no. included in the project. No. We'd love to know to what extent the kids are able to look at the materials and to write analytically mm -hmm. about the way in which gender is expressed through the interplay of, of the media. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are some things that are clearly at the root of this project that we wouldn't feel right unless we assess them. And that, that critical thinking skill that sort of we've been talking about, mm -hmm. that's probably something that's at the root of what we're trying to get at. One of the dangers of, of constructivist teaching, and one of the pitfalls, I should say, is that we leave this, this thing called assessment till the very, very end, and then we never get a measure uh, that distinguishes what kids know and can do as a result of their participation. What we want to not do is have a big high stakes culminating output at the end that's like if we had grades here that would be their grade. Mm -hmm. I think what we want is to space out um, assessments, some large, some small, yeah. so that none of them becomes such a high stakes. Mm -hmm. Now an exception to that might be if we have a culminating event, we were talking about doing a public event, yes. yeah. that by its very nature is sort of high stakes because it's public. Sure. However, the assessment aspect of that might actually be minimized because the performance aspect is what's being emphasized. Now, planning the assessments, um, what kind of stuff are we going to do? I, I would think that they might be doing one or two persuasive pieces. One might be research, one might be non-research, of course, then. It might have to do with the, the, the images in the media, how they might be writing a letter to an advertiser about why they shouldn't be doing this or why uh -huh. they should be doing this. Who are they writing to? Who gotcha. is their audience? And, and that goes into the idea yeah, of the, the media as well. So as we go through different um, topics about gender, you know, when we talk about magazines or whatever, I'll pro I will have a worksheet for them and then that will be part of the discussion. I mean, that usually guides the discussion. So worksheets, and, and we may have them actually create some things in mm -hmm. the class. Well, let's talk about the end products again, then. What are they? If they're making digital models of cells or animated videos of cells, models of DNA, um, how can that be put together to reflect the question? I don't know that that final exhibition has to have every piece totally answer the total question. Mm -hmm. But I think all these pieces together, these, this is the demonstration of, of what we did to get to a point where we can answer the question individually. You follow me? If one student wants to do a PowerPoint and another wants to do a magazine cover or a website or you know, whatever they're interested in doing, um, and we can figure out maybe a more general rubric mm -hmm. for assessing them. Have you thought of, of actually having them keep a journal throughout this project? That would have been a bad idea. Probably be a very good thing for them not to look just at their pre and post survey answers, but maybe read through their journal and then right. say, how have my attitudes changed? That might be, part, yeah, they could write about their journal. In a way, if we had a panel discussion during that exhibition, that would be um, not an assessment, but that would be an outcome, perhaps, of the their reflection of their journal, of their, but also of their journal writings and the reflection of that whole process. Right. The payoff for the school is that we show these kids who have now become really adept at discussing these things.